we're quite focused on, on mining. We do a lot of mining. We have been in mining projects since 2007, 2008. And um, I, I helped uh, the government in developing the mining law 2015 and also the investment law and about 10 other laws in this country in the last 15 years. I also serve as uh, the general counsel to GRAS, the Geological and Mining Association. And um, we have heard really very many things. We have heard very many things. And um, I, was, I was thinking of um, how to address um, this, this uh, discussion today. Um, There are expectations of the industry, of the exploration and mining industry. And this industry, typically everywhere in the world, expects stability from um, the mining regulation. It expects clarity of this mining regulation, predictability, good fiscal policies, security of tenure, which has to a great extent been guaranteed by the 2015 mining law, and also, the industry wants an understanding from the government for the market fluctuations. Because, you know, at one point in time, companies want to invest, and then the market for copper or for lithium or for any other um, ore uh, goes down, and then they, they, must, they must reduce the exploration investment and so forth, and the, they expect understanding for these financial oscillations of the companies who are present at the market. So these are generally the expectations of um, the, the exploration and future mining companies and also existing mining companies. On the other hand, it is important to understand what the government, at least the government of Serbia, and I would say many other governments, expect. First of all, the the, remember this, the government of Serbia and I have been in the government and working with the government for many years and their work in government relations, they want legality. They clearly emphasize legality as a top priority that everybody abides by the law. Then they feel much better working with you. The government naturally, as every other government, expects efficient, professional, and extensive exploration programs so that you don't sit on your license blocking other potential investors in developing the knowledge of geology of Serbia. Of course, they hope that you will come to a discovery point and then develop, develop uh, potentially a mine as efficiently and go in production as possible. Uh, the government also expects openness in dealing with them. They don't like hanky-panky business. They don't like playing around. They like talking openly to people and they respect when people talk openly to them, even if it's something is not perfect, but they want to be informed, they see you as a partner. That is, I think, very important to know in dealing with the government. So, you know, there is a natural tension which appears between the investors on the one hand, who are exposed to market fluctuations and uh, differing uh, financial capacities through the course of time, and the expectations of the government. And, you know, on the one hand, you expect the government to give you all the stability and clarity and that everything is on a flat line from the side of the government. But on the other hand, you expect them to, uh, to, to accept your oscillations and your different financial capacities. And there must be a good dialogue with the government to to overcome this natural tension because I see that the Serbian government, the Ministry of Mining, uh, the leading people in the state uh, have a feeling of certain frustration with certain projects which, uh, which were sold or which go slower than they expect. They would like it to go faster and they need also to understand that the markets are so changeable and that the positions of companies are changing and uh, that, uh, that also the, the the rights, uh, the mineral rights are changing hands uh, during the course of time. Um, 
It is important to understand also uh, that the government really prefers those who add value to a project. They prefer genuine uh, junior companies. They, of course, like large companies, of course. They, they are not very fond of traders. So this is one thing that needs to be understood. And we had cases, actually, when the government being frustrated with one or two companies which behaved as traders, um, actually um, a little bit, you know, suspended the issuing of permits, and not suspended, literally, but postponed. And so all those who did very good work paid the price uh, because the government was angry to one or two companies who were, you know, plain traders without having, having any, any value. So we, as an industry, uh, through GRAS uh, and other industry associations, need somehow to distinguish be between those who, who really add genuine value from those who are simple traders and want to make quick money without adding quality uh, to, to the geology of Serbia and to the international market of uh, new developments, new, new exploration projects. Um, in, in the eyes, um, in the um, talking, you know, I was thinking we have a law from 2015. And generally, the market sees this law as a good law, a leading law in the region. Uh, it is pretty good. I think I have high aspirations for my country. And I think that we can have the best law in Europe. And uh, we have the potential to have the best law. And we have actually drafted one law, which the government in 2015 declined. And uh, actually, we have this law that is now in place is just an improvement of the law from 2011. We made a law which is based on Finnish, Swedish law, the, the best laws in, in Europe. That was declined. So thinking, what, what can we do now at this moment to improve, as, as you rightly say, Eric, to improve the position of Serbia on, on, on this, this um, um, diagram which, which you made? First of all, we have a relatively a quite a good law compared to the region, an excellent one. And the practice, I think, is pretty good. I agree with Eric. I think that the practice is pretty good, actually. The government is very much favorable to developing um, exploration and f f uh, we hope also mining projects in the, in the future. Of course, um, that there is a space for improvement of the mining law. So, um, for example, an issue which could be tackled is how to deal with the limited terms, the limited terms for exploration and the potential that companies, large companies particularly, or the companies which are really going into production, they need like 15 years of exploration. How to deal with those situations and what kind of formula to insert into the law so as to distinguish those who are really abusing their rights, actually not uh, doing the work, from those who are really doing good work. Setting some objective criteria in the law so that those who, for example, invested 50 million, just put, you know, put, put kind, some kind of a, of a threshold into the law and say, for example, for copper, if you can invest it into exploration so much money, you have the right to a second new license and a whole new uh, term uh, for another uh, uh, eight years of term. Uh, so some kind of flexibility uh, should be introduced, but also keeping up the pressure on the companies to do exploration work. Then. The mining law needs a few clarifications, a few clarifications, I'll just mention one. For example, um, the mining field is defined in depth by uh, the planned exploration. So people who are not very much into mining, they think because companies who have an exploitation field, those who have an exploitation field, they have also the right uh, to explore. And they think that actually the depth of uh, the depth of exploitation is the uh, limit to exploration, which is ridiculous because exploration always precedes ex uh, exploitation and you must go deeper. So there is, a, there, there is a, a little problem in the law which needs some clarification and which has caused some, some uh, um, discussions among lawyers. There is a few other things like that. Um, talking about developing regulation, subordinate legislation, uh, on the basis of the mining law, I think the critical subordinate legislation to develop is the regulation on classification of reserves. 
Um, we have a, a regulation on classification of reserves from 1979 based on the Russian system of classification of, of resources and reserves. On the other hand, the law itself has adopted international standards like FERC, like, um, uh, like uh, 13, what is, I always forget this five digit number, the, the, the Canadian standard. So, um, uh, so we need to develop a regulation which will adopt international standards so that those who are financing, and uh, naturally most of them will, on the big markets, will have uh, the same document on the market and in Serbia, not they, they, that they don't need to develop actually two different kinds of uh, a, a classification of, uh, of their uh, reserves in the study, which they uh, uh, provide to, to the ministry. Uh, another thing which um, actually Luca mentioned, I think, or did, did you, Eric, the question, what kind of right is actually uh, granted by a permit? Uh, is it just an administrative right or is it a property right? I have an understanding that, of course, it's an administrative right because it's passed by a decision of the administrative body. But in essence, it is a property right. It's some kind of exploitation is a kind of a property right. Of course, the state remains the owner of the natural resources, but the exploitation company has something of a property right which should be on the market, which should be tradable, okay? Um, um, uh, another piece of advice is, um, and I think that we all agree with that, and the state secretary emphasized that, we're partners. We have to work together. Uh, the industry and the state have to work together to improve the position of Serbia, which is which, which Eric showed is now emerging, we have to get on the top. We cannot be as, um, as, as rich as Russia or Mongolia in natural resources, but we can be the most efficient. There is no, there is no, uh, there, there is no impediment to being efficient. Um, um, of course, explore options to improve uh, regulation further on and generally to develop subordinate legislation, which is in line with the new law and the government is late, the ministry is late in passing that um, uh, regulation. We will uh, very gladly, as Gras and my, my law firm will very gladly work with um, the state, with the ministry on improving and helping them improving both the law and the subordinate uh, legislation. So with this, I will, I will um, stop and we can uh, feel free to ask any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Milan. Well, I will misuse my role and because Luca told me that he has a question for Eric. So, Luca, please. Yeah, thanks, Milan. Uh, Eric, just one question. Uh, if you could uh, sum up, like, not, not to waste too much of your time, I assume EBRD has policies which exploration companies need to abide, uh, comply with in order to be eligible for financing, like fair treatment of communities and so on. Yeah, so uh, any operation will be subject to EBRD policy. So they are various. Uh, if I <coughs> if I'm be very brief, so excuse me, and, and be very sort of down to earth about it, the first policy we look at is who do we do business with? Mm. And we try to find out through our own uh, secret service if those we do business with are good people. And we are not Boy Scout. We understand the region has been through a difficult time. So there are certain minimum standards, of course, but you know, if at one point you stepped on a cat in your youth, I mean, we can still do business with you. So sometimes it's a bit more than that as well. What's important for us is that we are convinced that transparency is something that the counterparty takes seriously. So that's the first point. The second, and of course, is will this majority share owner, this sponsor, Will this person be a good representative for taking care of communities, environmental protection, treat workers' rights well, and so on? The whole governance. So if that is also a yes, then we start to feel really good. The final question comes then, you know, which of the two types of borrowers are we dealing with? Is it the borrower who will never pay back, or is the borrower who will pay back? So we, we kind of like the second one. Uh, the ones that pay back are nicer to work with. Disagree. Yeah. <laughs> so, in a nutshell, if you have integrity that is workable for us, and we have a conversation about it, then we are happy. If you have the values that is 
matching what the communities and the state regulation is representing, then we are happy. And finally, the jackpot comes when you also have a business plan that can give us comfort that you will pay back. What about an exploration company? How on earth can it pay back? Well, very rarely we will give a loan to an exploration company because in most cases, exploration is far too risky to have a loan. It has got to be equity. And in this regard, we invest in a number of exploration companies because we think we will lose on some, but we're going to win on others. So you have to take a portfolio view on it, but it doesn't take away very good due diligence on the three key criteria to be a partner with us. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, do we have any more questions? But in this case, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, the mic is yeah, yeah. Uh, because Milan mentioned one, one interesting point, if the exploration right is a property right or just an administrative, let's say, permit. Uh, it's a legal thing, but it affects financing in a way. Wh what's your view on pledging those? We know the licenses are transferable, yeah. but are they pledgeable? Um, the, the licenses are transferable under the Serbian law which is good. Uh, sometimes companies transfer the licenses, more often companies transfer the company, uh, companies, uh, buy companies who own licenses and through these corporate acquisitions actually get exploration rights um, through buying special purpose vehicles. Um, many years ago, 30 years ago, I was writing a, um, a, an, a paper on uh, Usufructus, okay, it's a Usufruct, you know, Usufructus. And um, there I have read that un under French law, actually mining rights are some kind of Usufruct under French law, which is quite, and this is not an exact comparison because Usufruct is, is as the old, old Latin say, salva rerum substantia, with, a, with, with preserving the substance of, you use somebody else's thing, uh, but you preserve the substance. Here, you are actually taking out the substance uh, by exploiting, so it's not completely comparable, but um, you know, many rights are issued by an administrative permit, but in essence, uh, they are property rights. Uh, or uh, you can say estate rights, imovinska prava. For example, a patent is definitely imovinsko pravo and a, a property, uh, imovinsko estate right. But as